Hey everyone, uh, we got a couple stories for you today. First, I wanna see you guys drop a like on this video. Can we get to a thousand likes? Literally every video in the month of November, if we get to a thousand likes in the first 24 hours, uh, I will give away something to someone in the comment section. So uh, yeah, obviously you'll wanna drop a comment as well. Now, setting all that aside, uh, we do have two stories for today. We're not gonna go with the traditional uh, setup that we've had the last couple of videos, uh, just because it's only two stories. Uh, one of them has to deal with the Metroid Prime remakes. Another has to do with the upcoming Pokemon games. And no, we're not talking spoilers for the Pokemon games, so no spoiler warnings here. This is actually about a patch being released tomorrow which is interesting because uh, that would be specifically to give it to media members, although obviously the game's leaked at retail, so maybe they're just being kind. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about with these two stories. Before we do, I want to remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now uh, for Prime Giving, that is what we're calling it. Uh, the giveaway is for a Switch OLED bundle, and then on top of that, you could choose a charity of your choice for us to donate $100 to. Uh, so yeah, to enter that, all you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into today's stories. So this first one comes from Emily Rogers. So we can consider this rumor territory, although it's sort of update territory on rumors that have been going around for a while. You guys remember when the Prime Trilogy was supposedly coming to Nintendo Switch? Well, she updated a while ago that it really wasn't the trilogy per se. It was really Prime 1, and then uh, they were going to do some more stuff with Prime 2 and 3 later. Well, she updated some of this information today. Uh, she said, work on Metroid Prime 1 Remaster started around 2017 to 2018. So basically late 2017 early 2018 original plan was develop and release prime one first now we're talking about like built from the ground up sort of like a, a true remaster of metroid prime which i think really had some people excited of the first one uh then use prime one's foundation aka the engines tools and assets to recreate prime two and three later so they were planning to do this for prime two and three even if those games came after metroid prime four Nobody knows if the plans were changed or axed after COVID. It would be cool if Nintendo sticks to their original plan and brings all three Metroid Prime games to Switch. I'm rooting for the best possible scenario here. The only thing Emily Rogers, she says right here, can confirm at the moment is that Prime 1 exists and it just wrapped up development over the summer. AKA Metro Prime 1 Remake slash Remaster set to go for 2022 is basically what she's saying. Now Nintendo could choose to release it whenever they want. It doesn't have to be next year, but if they wrapped up development, that's usually a good, a good, you know, prospect that it's going to come next year. That is really, really exciting. I want, you know, yeah, obviously I want Metro Prime 4. That's what I want more than anything. And I know some people are going to look at this as, oh man, it's another remake, another remaster. Where's the new games from Nintendo? They're coming. We have Breath of the Wild 2 coming. We have Sparks of Hope coming. We have Splatoon 3 coming, right? We have new games coming. Pokemon Legends Arceus. We have new games coming, guys. It's just, you know, there was a pandemic. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. We're technically still in it. Not even sure when it's ever going to end. I, I, I really question when it's ever going to end, but that's a, a topic for another day. All right, folks, let's get into our next story. Uh, and this is actually officially from Nintendo's patch site. So basically Nintendo has a website where they list all the updates for various games. And this is an update uh, releasing tomorrow uh, called version 1.1.0 for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. That's right, games that aren't even out for, you know, the next seven to eight days. So next week is when those games comes out. Uh, so yeah, it feels really weird that we already have patch notes um and this isn't even like a day one patch it's november 11th so this was really curious to me when i saw the, oh it's getting a patch tomorrow why what the hell are media members who have access to the game to make reviews missing from their game why do we need this this is weird let's read the patch notes because it just reminds me of how much we can't trust the pokemon company here it goes. Communications functions are added for the Grand Underground Super Contest. Shows, Union Room, and Mystery Gift. You'll be able to enjoy local and internet communication functions of the game features, like the Grand Underground Super Contest shows and the Union Room. You'll also be able to receive gifts via the Mystery Gift. 
Post Hall of Fame elements were added. Some game elements you'll be able to enjoy after entering the Hall of Fame, such as Ramana's Park, will be implemented. Note, if you have game data that reflects that you have already entered the Hall of Fame, you can play these elements immediately after updating the software. So at first you're like, okay, whatever. They enabled some online functions. You could maybe understand why maybe they disabled some of that. Um, okay, fine. But this next bit, I don't even know how to explain this. Some in-game movies and animations added. And what they mean by movies is basically cutscenes. Um, certain animated scenes and movies, including the opening movie that plays when the software is opened and the ending movie will be implemented. Yes, the very first thing that happens when you load up a Pokemon game and then the very last thing that happens after you beat the Pokemon game weren't even there. They're not even there in the retail versions. You have to get this update to actually have the beginning and ending of the game. Moving on, let's get through the rest of this. It's kind of frustrating just reading that a uh, little bit there. Um, note, an opening movie has been added that plays when the software is open. You can see it by closing the game and reopening it with existing save data. Note, an ending movie has been added. Even if you have already reflected entering the Hall of Fame on your save data, you can see the ending by entering the Hall of Fame again. Some issues have also been fixed for a more pleasant gameplay now i don't mind the some issues i'm gonna fix more pleasant gameplay that's a uh, that's gameplay tweaks that that's fixing bugs etc so that to me doesn't you know isn't that big a deal but the fact that the beginning and ending scenes from the game weren't there like the startup scene and the ending scene weren't actually factually there in retail copies because some retail copies have leaked that to me is like it screams this game was unfinished now I'm not saying the game is going to be incomplete. You're going to get this patch, hopefully, before you even play the game. I mean, you're not required to download patches to play, but um, I hope that everyone updates their game. So, yeah, this stuff's going to be there day one. So you could say, who cares? But this stuff getting added to the game as a patch a week before launch when they couldn't even have it ready in time for printing copies of the game is just the Pokemon Company being the Pokemon Company. It feels like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl should have been delayed. But the Pokemon Company does not push game dates very willingly. Uh, this also lets you wonder what's happening with Legends Arceus and will Legends Arceus on January 28th actually be ready? Because the thought process here is if we couldn't delay these this game by a couple of weeks just to make sure the beginning and ending of the game is actually on the cartridge okay fine they couldn't delay this and january 28th remember that date was given to us before we even knew in the date for brilliant diamond and shining pearl we knew legends arceus date very early it makes people wonder what the hell is going to happen with that game they're very like we're not moving the day it's coming out on january 28th exciting but also whether the game is done or not it's coming out because they have a strict schedule and more games they want to launch probably next holiday you know the next generation or whatever is coming so this to me is just i'm not sure uh, what to think at this point uh i i would like them to take their time with the i understand the pokemon company has so much to manage uh between the animated show the card games i mean i don't even know there's so much going on with pokemon that i know they have strict schedules for everything but man I personally don't think people are going to care if the games come up, come out around the same time as things happen in the animated series. I'm just being honest. I don't think us gamers care as much that things line up perfectly with the card packs and everything. I don't think it matters. We just want better video games. And for one of the biggest IPs of all time to have this sort of treatment, and it feels so awkward because Nintendo delays games all the time. Like... Seriously, Nintendo refuses to basically release games unless they're in what they would consider a fully polished, complete state, right? Like, it's very rare we get a first-party Nintendo game to come out that has game-breaking bugs right when you launch or is missing the ending and beginning, missing cutscenes. Like, that doesn't happen from Nintendo. And they're so closely tied to the Pokemon Company. And... To watch them do this time and time again where something is going on. It's always some sort of controversy. Can't ever just be, here's a complete video game. Have a good day. And I'm not even complaining about day one patches. Nintendo does day one patches, but not for missing cutscenes. 
What? So, yeah. Um, this is a thing that's happening. I know some people are going to think it's not that big a deal, but it just shows more ineptitude of the Pokemon company. Then this game wasn't made by them, and I'm not going to blame the developers because the Pokemon company are the ones that put the time restraint on developers. Even ones that aren't their own, they hired out. You are going to do it by this date, period, end of story. And I just don't like that attitude. I wish they would take advice from Shigeru Miyamoto, who said delayed games, you know, are eventually good, which isn't always true, by the way, and rushed games are not always bad. So his quote doesn't hold true today, but that quote came from an era when you couldn't patch games anymore. So yeah, a rushed game that's broken will always be broken back then, uh, you know, whereas a delayed game that's perfected will likely be a much better experience. That was a quote that really worked before we had the whole online stuff and all the... So again, not as relevant today, but also relevant in a sense that, hey, look, as a gamer, I'd rather a game be delayed and us have a better game for it. Um, and it makes me really worry what the hell is going to happen with Legends Arceus. Um, I'm still getting Legends Arceus Day 1, unless something happens between now and then to convince me otherwise. And I'm still having like lots of hopes it can get me back into Pokemon. Uh, I like a lot of the direction they're going with it. Obviously the riding and the swimming Pokemon and um, simplifying a lot of the battle mechanics and everything because they're going back to a time before a lot of those mechanics existed. Uh, so I really like that. It's, it feels like something that's really going to appeal to me. It's happening at a time pretty much long before any Pokemon game that's currently up. Out. I really enjoy this. It almost feels like a Breath of the Wild style reboot of the series, although it's not that. And they've confirmed there's a new generation coming someday. It's just, damn, you know? Damn! This is one of the biggest IPs in the world! But I mean, it became the biggest IP in the world by doing exactly this kind of stuff for the last 20 plus years. So, I guess I shouldn't be shocked anymore. I still just... I expect better from a company that's so closely tied to Nintendo. And Nintendo's not perfect either. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was clearly rushed out um, to hit a deadline. Uh, and that was one of the few times I think you can point to during the Switch era where Nintendo's like, yeah, let's just throw this game out there. Even though it probably could have used more polish and smoothed out the frame rate and everything. And with how well the Switch was doing in 2017, it wouldn't have hurt the Switch to really delay that into like a spring title for the following year. And 2018 was a bit of a light year anyway, so... It would have been nice to kind of start it with that, but and it started with that and with Smash. That feels like a solid year, but oh well. Life moves forward, and uh, let's just hope for the best. Uh, some of you want to know, by the way, if I'm picking up these games day one. I am undecided if I'm picking up Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl day one. I just don't know. I, I wish I could commit, but I don't know. So until I know, you can't know. I would say err on the side of I'm likely not going to get them. But you never know. Maybe something hits me the day I release and then I decide, screw it, let's go get one of them. Let's stream it. And let's have, let's just, let's see what happens, right? I, I hate complaining about games that I'm not actually playing. So I'm complaining here. So now it feels like oh, I better go play the game because I feel like you shouldn't fully judge a game until it's in your hands. I'm judging the development cycle, not the end product. The end product after all the updates might be amazing. It's just, it just should be on the cartridge. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboJans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.